What's up people? I'm gonna walk you through how to set up your own streaming server. And in this first video, we're just gonna talk about streaming to a server, no recording, just capturing it on the server and being able to connect to that server and watch the stream. So there's gonna be three uh, pieces of software you need on your desktop right now. VLC or the Video LAN, which is at um, videolan.org. I'll put everything that you're gonna to need to download in the description. Besides that, you're gonna need OBS. And then the last thing you'll need is a terminal emulator to connect to the Linux server. And of course, you'll need a Linux server. I recommend using DigitalOcean or Linode. Um, I use DigitalOcean most of the time. And I have videos on how to connect to DigitalOcean, spin up uh, virtual machines. We need VLC, we need OBS, uh, a terminal emulator. If you're using Macintosh, you're fine. You have terminal, that is a terminal emulator. The other thing uh, you'll need is something like Putty or uh, there's some other software you'll, you'll get from Windows, but Putty is probably the easiest one and the most common one to use. So I'll put that in the description as well. Let me tell you why you do this. People who want to stream in the first place probably already have solutions like Restream or other multicast software. The problem I've heard with this multi multicast software is if you're using it to stream to YouTube, Twitch, and Facebook, they know you're restreaming to multiple platforms and they will deprioritize, for lack of a better term. And I heard that some people get less traffic if they use something like a restream because YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch know that restream exists and other services exist. They know what servers they are and they know their IP addresses. So if you're using one of those services, they know right away and they're gonna treat you a little bit differently because you're restreaming content. Most people just stream to one service provider like Twitch, YouTube, or Facebook individually, and they don't have a problem. It's when they use the multicast platforms is when I heard they have problems. So anyway, this is one way where you can actually begin the process of streaming to your own server, and then from that server, multicasting to the different servers or the different services, and those services will not be familiar with your own private homebrew server that is um, multicasting your stream. The other thing is, if you've ever wanted to put your stream on your own website, this is gonna allow you to do that, not in this video, but in the video that is a follow-up to this one, I'll create where we're gonna multicast, record, and um, uh, embed your stream on your own web, web page, which is complete control and ownership of your content, which is fantastic. But we're not gonna do that in this video. This video is just gonna be setting up the server, casting to the server and then grabbing or, or connecting to that server stream with the VLC. So let's start with the DigitalOcean. And I've already had uh, started this process. And one of the things that I started doing was I was testing this out with all versions of Linux. I tested it with CentOS 7, 8. I did another installation with uh, Debian 9. And nothing worked as good as Ubuntu 18. So Ubuntu 18 is what, I, what I'm using right here. I'm gonna destroy this instance. I'm gonna go down here and build, rebuild this instance. It's going to generate a new password. I'm gonna to have to grab the password for my email and then we can log in and start configuring that server. Okay, so what I did was I already started this um, terminal so I can connect right away. And then I, what else did I have? The commands already ready to go so I can Avoid mistyping and making this video longer than it needs to be. Notification of the email, that give me the password, and away we go. So if you follow along with me, pull up in your terminal, and we're gonna SSH into the VM with root at the IP address 206. I'm gonna type yes to accept the fingerprint, which is the secure key, and now the password. And okay, we have to change our password. All right, so let's just start with a clear screen. Now we're gonna start with these commands that I had just to get it going. Let's update and then upgrade the server. And then we're gonna upgrade. Did we update? Now we're gonna upgrade. Just to start off, it's always good to update and upgrade your server. See the latest packages and security patches. And all the commands we're gonna be using, I'm gonna put them in the description so you can copy and paste just like I'm doing now, or I'm going to do now to avoid mistyping. And just to keep it easy, I just keep the local and the local version on both of them. Those questions right there, just keep it simple. Don't need to update everything and to completely change the version you're, of Linux you're running, or Ubuntu in this case. Okay, so now we're done with the updates. 
upgrades. Now we're going to copy this command right here, which is going to install some dependencies. Okay, next line is going to be more dependencies. And now we'll install the software Nginx, which is going to be the web host for the stream. All right, next is the module that helps us configure the stream itself. So we can reboot this just to make it a little bit easier. Shouldn't take long to reboot, so log back in with your special password. And great, great, great. Let's see if we can start it now. Did I misspell it? Is that the problem? I must have misspelled it. Yeah, that's why I cut and paste most of the time when I'm running these very simple basic installs or quick installs as well. Okay, so now that that's done, uh, we can configure the Nginx configuration file and copy in above the HTTP. We're going to copy this information right here, the RTP information with these all the way down to these three brackets. If you're not familiar with how to use Vi, then here's what you do. Keystroke by keystroke. Once you have your cursor above the H, you can press I. It'll go into insert mode. You can see at the bottom of that window. Just return a couple of times to give yourself a little space. We're going to grab this text and go back into the terminal and then paste it in. If you're on a Macintosh, you just hit Command V. If you're on Windows, you just right click if you're using PuTTY. If you're using something else, I'm not sure what you're going to have to do. It could be Shift Control V or right click will paste into the um, terminal. Make sure all the spacing hasn't changed and you want to make sure these lines match exactly. Just I'm going to post all this stuff in the description below. So once you have that, you're going to hit Escape to exit the insert mode or the edit mode. And then you want to hit, um, there's a couple ways to do this, but I'll walk you through a way you can visually see what I'm doing, is go to colon, which is shift semicolon, and then WQ, which is right, quit, and then exclamation point, just in case it stops you from writing this file. And that's it. If you want to go back in and check it, you can just hit up arrow. It'll give you your last command. And you see the RMTP settings are still there. The next thing to do is we can test. You don't really need to do this part, but you can test the file to make sure it was good. The sorry, the setting you just or the, the lines you just paste in the config file are going to be good. You have a successful test there with the NGINX space TAC T and you see a successful test. What we want to do is make sure this is running so we can go to let's see. Do a system control, it's start just in case. And then if we want to make sure it's running, we can do the same thing. All right, so that's all good. Now we can basically send a stream to this address. Let me go back to this DigitalOcean configuration and we see the, um, the IP address here. We can click this copy text to copy the IP address. And we can tell, I'm going into OBS now, we can tell OBS where to send the stream. So we have the stream, it's custom. I think I have all this information from the last time, so I'll just, but I'll delete it just so we can go through it together. Let's see, so it's rtmp colon slash slash paste in the address slash live. And then you can type in a stream key to make the stream unique when it's capturing in the temporary tree on the server. So I'll just type in stream in the stream key. It's going to mask it, but I'm typing in stream and then hit OK. And I'll go to another scene in OBS just so you can see what I'm going to stream. So what I'm going to stream is uh, basically a window, which is a Firefox window, which has a digital ocean and my camera. We're going to start the stream. Failed to connect to the server. What is going on? Let's try again. What did I mistype? Okay, I don't see anything that would cause this problem. Let me work this out and see what is not happening. Just running. Let's try restarting. Mm, interesting. 
Okay, I've had this PID problem before. I think I even have it in the file, the text file. What do we need to type to fix that up? And it's a bug. So here we go with this. Let's see if this fixes it up. And I've installed this and it didn't get this problem. So this seems to be an intermittent problem, but this also seems to fix it. try again and it's streaming this time so no problems this time connecting right to it now we have to connect to the server from our client the client in this case is the VLC and you can use this from your phone from your desktop from your iPad from whatever uh, device can get VLC which pretty much all platforms can have the software it's open source so we want to hit uh, the network settings and in my case since i'm using a macintosh i'm hitting command n if you're using windows control n and i'll show you also on the ipad so rtmp colon slash slash what is the ip address 206 198 and that's going to be slash live and i think we took away the stream so it's just going to be live in this case i'm going to open that up I don't know why I didn't open it right away, but it was already, I typed it in all correctly. So there it goes. But you can see there's a delay. So when I do this, there's a little bit of a delay going all the way to the server. But that's how that goes. And let me get the iPad and configure this thing a little bit because I haven't connected this with the iPad yet. So on the iPad, we go to the network section. We go to RTMP colon slash slash and then the IP address and then live slash live. Okay, it's connecting. Okay, so now it's on the iPad as well. So I'm streaming from the desktop or from this computer to this computer and to the iPad. And multiple people can connect. There's not a limit on how many people can connect. The limit is going to be bandwidth and the server. So the server resources up to a certain point of connections is going to tap out. And then the bandwidth is also going to run out. So you have to make sure that when you're configuring your streaming server, let me kill this real quick. When you're configuring your streaming server, you have enough memory and storage. You don't need storage for this implementation. You need storage when you're going to record. Because with this implementation right here, now we're not recording anything. We could record on OBS if we wanted to, or we could record on the server. But right yet, this configuration is not for recording. It's just for streaming in real time. And that's pretty much it. So I just uh, demonstrated streaming from this desktop to two sources, back to the desktop and then also to the iPad. And like I said, you can have multiple sources. One of the nice things about um, this is having that control and you'd be able to put your stream wherever you want it. And that's it for now. This is going to be just for the streaming part. And we're going to do a second video about how to really push the stream out to different places, meaning different platforms, including your own website.